This is the BBC program for the forces. Hi again. Welcome to the High Gang Show, starring B.B. Daniels, Vic Holler, and Ben Lyon. That's me, folks, with Jay Wilbur and his orchestra, Sam Brown, the Green Sisters, and our guest star, whose name we're going to keep a secret until later on in the program. And here's Jay Wilbur and his boys kicking the lid off with Save a Little Sunshine. The Green Sisters will sing it for you. And now, gang, I'm going to bring to the microphone a man who really needs no introduction and is not going to get any. Come on, Vic. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. I don't see why you never use my middle name when you introduce me. Your middle name? Yeah. I never knew you had one. What is it? Such nerve. My name is Vic Quits Oliver. <laughs> Quits, that's rather an unusual name. How'd you get it? Well, you see, when I was born, my father looked at me, and then he looked at my mother and said, What do you say? Let's call it quits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. Say, Vic, that's a lovely suit you've got on today. Like it, Ben? That's nothing. <laughs> I got 50 suits. <laughs> 50 suits? Yeah, all against me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I happen to know that that suit cost you 20 guineas. How do you know? I saw the summons. <laughs> Ben, how old are you? 31. Would you like to be 32? Yeah. No, no, shut up. <laughs> oh, now, come on. No. <laughs> no harm done, Vic. Let's make it up. You know, really, I'd like to bury the hatchet. Yes, I know, in my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't take it so seriously. Say, tell me, what are you doing these days? How is your violin playing? Well, you see, to tell you the truth, I have temporarily uh, given up playing the violin. Really? Yes. Oh, the violin maker came and took it away, huh? Yes, uh, <laughs> nothing of the sort. <laughs> I'm extending my activities to other fields. Now, I write poetry and I invent. Well, you're covering a lot of territory. For instance, what kind of poetry do you write? Oh, I don't know, little odes and epitaphs, you know. For, for instance, you like to hear one? Yes. Now, there was a young lady of Kent who knew perfectly well what it meant when men asked her to dine, gave a lobster and wine. She knew what it meant, but she went. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, okay. Not bad, right? Oh, not bad. Oh, okay. That's very good. Say, tell me, do you know Shakespeare well? No, I only met him once. <laughs> <laughs> that explains it. Well, how about your invention? Oh, well, Ben, I don't want to say anything about myself, but I am a very clever man. <laughs> you, you mean a genius? Well, what's the use of denying it? Facts are facts. <laughs> I have five sisters and three brothers. They're all uh, geniuses. <laughs> yeah, well, what are their names? Well, there's Sasha, Masher, Dasher... Yasha, Agasha, Yasha, Misha, and Grisha. Oh. <laughs> All the rest have 31. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Except, except Yasha. He has, he got 90 days, one previous conviction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but listen, my dear Vic, you must tell me all about your invention. Well, years ago I invented, mind you, with my own hands and brains, a boat which could cross the ocean without a motor, without sails, without a rudder, and without a bottom. And when I set out with it on my first trip, everybody told me I couldn't do it. Ha <laughs> ha! Everybody said the boat would sink. Oh, well, the world is full of skeptical yes. people. Tell me, what happened? <laughs> they were right, it sank. <laughs> I'm colossal already, right? <laughs> well, I hope you weren't discouraged. Me discouraged? You'll make me laugh, of course not. I started to invent a machine which was a combination dictograph, printing press, and adding machine. It did anything but anything. Yeah, could it boil an egg? Well, if you can lay an egg, it'll boil one. <laughs> and you can. <laughs> now, listen, stop being personal. Tell me more about the machine. How does it work? Well, as you talk, the type falls automatically into place. Then the press starts rolling, and out it comes. Out comes what? Well, I've often wondered. <laughs> uh, you see, it isn't quite perfected yet. Something is missing. I wonder what's missing. Well, my assistant, for one. Uh, you see, the, la the last time I saw him, he was bending over the machine, and his necktie got caught in the machine. Oh, uh, my, what a catastrophe. What happened? Well, it's hard to say. His wife kept calling up every half hour... She said she wanted to see her husband, but uh, I didn't feel she'd be satisfied with what was coming out. <laughs> I, I shouldn't think she would. Then, look, I want to ask you a very personal question. People always think I'm a little bit, well, uh, how should I say? Well, <laughs> well, you, <laughs> well, you see, in, in French we say, <laughs> balmy. <laughs> oh, of course not. People who imagine themselves to be somebody else are called balmy. Oh, for instance, you don't think you're Napoleon, do you, Vic? <laughs> Napoleon, of course not, Ben. You don't think you're Christopher Columbus, do you? <laughs> Christopher Columbus, <laughs> of course not, Ben. Oh, well then, Vic, you're perfectly sane. Oh, thank you, Ben. Napoleon, <laughs> Christopher Columbus, <laughs> the very idea. I'm Julius Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> And now Jay Wilbur and Sam Brown give you the popular number, I'm Walking Through Mockingbird Lane. Through Mockingbird Lane I'm in the sunshine again Everybody in the tree Says good morning to me While I'm walking through Mockingbird Lane I'm just swinging along down the lane Ben? Yes? Ben, B.B. and Sam Brown are having an awful argument about something. I think you'd better break it up. Oh, I will. Thanks for telling me, Mr. Pepper. Oh, B.B. Daniels, come here. Thank you. 
Thank you, gang. What do you want, Lion? Well, I want to know what you and Sam Brown are arguing about. Well, it's about our farm. He said that my cow, Gertrude, isn't smart, and I say she is. Well, what's so smart about your cow? Well, to begin with, she sleeps on her back. Sleeps on her back? What for? Well, so the cream will be on top in the morning. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> say, listen, B.B. Yeah? When did you buy this cow, Gertrude? Well, I'll tell you, Ben. Last week, I couldn't make up my mind whether to buy a cow or a bicycle. Well, you certainly look silly riding a cow. <laughs> I'd look a lot sillier milking a bicycle. <laughs> now, don't tell me you milked the cow yourself. Well, I didn't at first. I had one of those, you know, electric milking machines, but I had to get rid of it. Why? Well, one night I forgot to turn the electric milker off, and when I got back to the barn, the car was turned inside out. Oh, say, that was, that was a calamity. Yes. Yeah. So now you milk the cow by hand? Oh, sure, yes. Well, uh, since you know so much about cows, tell me, how long cows should be milked? Oh, the same as short cows. No, no, B.B. Yes, yes, Ben. Tell me, would you like Vic and me to deliver milk to you every morning? Oh, Vic doesn't get up early enough to deliver milk. Oh, he gets up early enough now since I bought him an alarm clock and a parrot. Oh, does the alarm clock wake him up? No, no, but the alarm clock wakes up the parrot, and what that parrot says would wake anybody up. <laughs> well, that's a nice little system. Well, it was, but the parrot died yesterday. What, did Vic kill him? No, no, he died of sausage. He died of sausage? Oh, yes, you see, he ate some sausage, and he felt so good about it that he started to yell, and the cat jumped up and ate him. Well, that's too bad. No, no, it isn't. It teaches a lesson. What lesson? When you're full of baloney, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> Baby, Daniel, baby, you remind me of a dope. All right, when shall I remind you? Uh, go on, go on and tell me more about this amazing farm of yours. Do you raise any vegetables? Oh, yes, but we can't be bothered, you know, Ben, with the ordinary type of vegetables, such as carrots and potatoes and cabbage, you know, and Brussels sprouts. Well, that's where you're wrong, B.B. Those kind of vegetables are very essential to Britain's Dig for Victory campaign. Well, and so are the vegetables we raise. Well, what kind do you raise? Well, very extraordinary vegetables. Why, do you know, Ben, that Dick and I were the first farmers to inoculate cucumbers with yellow jaundice germs? Well, what a, yeah? <laughs> what did you get? Bananas. <laughs> well, you certainly are clever. Oh, that's nothing. Do you know what else we've done with cucumbers? I'm afraid to ask. Then I'll tell you. We've beautified our cucumbers by turning the seeds inside out before we plant them. Well, how does that beautify them? Well, you see, when our cucumbers come up, they're born with dimples instead of warts. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's certainly some farm, yes, baby. Say, tell me, how is the irrigation problem? Oh, it's not so good, Ben. It's pretty dry. Well, I can tell you how to overcome that. How? Just cross a weeping willow with some onions. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> you wouldn't. Now, Ben, would you like to know what our latest success is in crossbreeding? Sure. What have I got to lose? Say, you're getting awfully fresh lately. Am I? Yes. Anyway, we're now crossing honeybees with glowworms. What for? So the bees can work at night. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you're going in for crossbreeding, yeah. why don't you cross your horse Archibald with a radish? With a radish? What would I get? Horse radish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> then it was very funny. <laughs> really? Yeah, well, I, I made it up without thinking, you know. Yeah, no, you'd have to. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Never mind the insults. Tell me, uh, do you grow any fruit on your farm? Oh, yes. Right now we're crossing a golf ball with a grapefruit. You've crossed a golf ball with a grapefruit? Mm -hmm. What was the result? Well, every time our grapefruit is about to squirt in your eye, it hollers, Four! <laughs> oh, forward. <laughs> Well, folks, here's a tune that should be dedicated to the Green Sisters because it's called I've Got Rhythm. Music, Jay, please. Wilbur calling. W-I-L-B-U-R, Wilbur. 
Hello, girls. What are you going to sing? I got rhythm, I got music, I got my man who could ask for anything more. I got daisies in the pasture, I got my man who could ask for anything more. Old man trouble, I don't mind him, you won't find him around my door. Gangway, pull down your blinds and block up your keyholes because here comes that bad little boy, Pete Keyhole. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is your favorite reporter, Pete Keyhole, giving you all the latest inside information about the personalities on the High Gang program. Personality number one, <laughs> B.B. Daniels. The only reason why people listen to musical numbers on this program comes from an old and very aristocratic family. She has so much blue blood in her that every time she cuts herself, she fills her fountain pen. <laughs> Personality number two. Jay Wilbur, the only musical director in this country who shook hands with Beethoven once, was a most peculiar baby. His ears were so large, his parents didn't know whether he was going to walk or fly. He looked like a taxi cab with both doors open. Personality number three, Sam Brown, whom the girls always call their dream man because he's always half asleep, uh, stops in a hotel where they charged three guineas a day for a room with a bathroom. Two guineas a day for a room with hot and cold running water. One guinea for a room with an ordinary sink. Sam Brown has a room with a sponge. <laughs> Personality number four. The Green Sisters, our three little jitterbugs, are very nice gals. They never go any place without their mother. Their mother goes any place. <laughs> Personality number five. Ben Lyon, our master of ceremonies. The only man who looks the same with his gas mask on or off. <laughs> Went, uh, went to the doctor last year who told him that dampness was bad for his rheumatism. Ever since then, Ben hasn't washed his neck. <laughs> Personality number six, Vic Oliver, who has doubled in films for Rin Tin Tin, Tom Mix's Horse, and Scruffy, is a very careful man. When he practices violin, he lets his wife stand outside the house so the neighbors won't think he's beating her up. <laughs> That's all, folks. Goodbye. Most every week, B.B. brings you a new song. Well, this week, she introduces The Breeze and I, a lovely melody based on the Spanish classic Andalusia. The Breeze and I
gang, for the novelty spot of our program, If I Had the Chance. This week, I'm very fortunate in being able to bring to the microphone a man who's held more records than any athlete in Great Britain, but has never broken one. I'm referring to that grand radio personality, Christopher Stone. Come on, Christopher! Uh, hello there, Christopher. <laughs> ah, thanks, gang, and thank you, Ben. Well, it's certainly nice of you, nice to have you on the program, Christopher. And I know the gang are all eagerly awaiting to find out what your secret ambition is. Secret ambition? Well, uh, now, don't laugh, Ben. But I've always had an ambition to be like Vic Oliver. Well, <laughs> well that's, that's grand. Now, look, the first thing to do, I suppose, is to get Vic Oliver here to teach you a little bit of the art of comedy. Well, you... oh, oh, Vic, Vic, come here a moment, will you, please? Oh. I want you to meet Mr. Christopher Stone. Not the Christopher Stone. Yes, the Christopher Stone. Never heard of him. <laughs> well, now, look. <laughs> look, whether you have or not, Vic, yes. Mr. Mr. Stone's ambition is to be like you. Like me? Oh, well, of course, that is not so easy. <laughs> you see, the most important thing, Mr. Stone, in my profession is to be able to tell stories like I do. Oh, I can never do that. Oh, yes, Mr. Stone, why couldn't you? Well, I don't know any old jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another comic. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you one joke, which is one of my newer jokes, yes. and you don't know. Listen, uh -huh. it isn't my sister, uh -huh. it isn't my brother, uh -huh. still it's the child of my father and mother. Now, who is it? Who is it? I don't know. <laughs> it's I give me, up. me! <laughs> oh, no, of course it's you. I, I didn't think of that at first, but now I realize it must be you. Now, uh, do you mind? Uh, I'd rather like to practice this joke on Ben Lahn. Oh, sure. Come ben, on. Ben, oh, come yeah. here a minute. Yeah, He's got a marvelous <laughs> joke for you. Oh, wait. <laughs> look, now, look what is it? Ben, uh, <laughs> it's just joke. a joke. What is it? It, it, isn't, it isn't my sister. Uh, it, isn't my, it isn't my brother. Still, it's the child of my father and mother. Now, who is it? Why, it's you, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Why, it's Vic Oliver. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Now, you'll improve, you'll improve. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Stone, haven't you got any other ambitions than that? Oh, yes. What would you like? I'd like to be a crooner like uh, Sam Brown. <laughs> hmm? My yes. gosh, does there have to be another Sam Brown? <laughs> anyway, this is not my department, Mr. Stone. I think we'd better ask Jay Wilbur to play something for you and see how you make out and whether we can take it. <laughs> <laughs> How's the tempo, Christopher? Oh, that's marvelous. Keep, uh, keep, uh, keep creepers. Keep us creepers. Keep us creepers. Watch out, baby. Right. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. Jeepers, creepers, where do you get those peepers? Jeepers, creepers, where do you get those eyes? Gosh, all hit up. How do you get so hit up? Gosh, all hit up. How do you get that side? God, I mean, when you tell me you're in me, <laughs> got to put my pieces on. Keepers, creepers, where do you get those peepers? Oh, those weepers, how do you get those eyes? Where do you get those Ah, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Now, if you'll just turn me over on the other side, you'll hear me singing Flatfoot Flugy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, just the same. Uh, I think we, just for the time being, we've had enough, oh, Christopher. And will. really, thank you for your cooperation. Honestly, you couldn't have made the program better. Well, I certainly couldn't have made it any worse. <laughs> <laughs> right, thanks. Cecil Woods has made another of his colorful arrangements. It includes Take My Heart, I Give My Heart, and You Are My Heart's Delight. So here's Jay and his orchestra who bring you a symphony to the heart. <laughs> Thank you. 
And Vic, Phoebe and Vic, come here yes, quick. What's all the excitement? What's all the excitement? Oh, look, a great honor has been bestowed on me. Yes. My ability is at last appreciated. In other words, I've been recognized. Well, Ben's been recognized. Call the Black Mariah. <laughs> oh, quiet, Vic. Tonight I'm having dinner with the mayor. Haven't you got any dinner at home? Oh, of course I have, but... Why don't you? Don't you like it? Why, yes, Phoebe, but... Why don't you go home and eat it? Oh, oh you don't understand. I've been elected captain of our local PT group, and this dinner is being given in my honor. What is PT, Phoebe? P.T. Public twerp. Oh, what? Oh, what ignorant! P.T. means physical instructor. Oh, now tell me, Vic. Uh, how do you like my new suit? Fine. Who was it made for? <laughs> <laughs> Why me, of course. And it was made by one of the best tailors in London. Hmm. Where were you when it was being made? Australia. <laughs> Why Australia? Because that pocket looks like it was made for a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Say, Ben, what kind of a hat are you going to wear tonight? My silk topper. Oh, you can't do that. You must wear a P.T. hat if you don't want to insult your host. Yeah. Well, what's a P.T. hat? Oh, what ignorance, huh, Vic? It's a physical trainer's hat. Yes, and by luck, I have one in my pocket. Here it is. Oh, goody, goody. Put it on, Ben. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. That's, oh, that's, a, that's a monkey's hat. He won't mind. Put it on. <laughs> All right, all right, but tell me, how does it look? No. Oh, beautiful. Say, Vic, if Ben's going to an athlete's dinner party, don't you think we'd better see if he's physically fit first? Oh, but definitely. Oh, look yes. at me, Ben. My, my, my. You look very tired, very tired. Yeah. Do you get much sleep? Oh, yes, yes. I go to bed between 10 and 11 every night. <laughs> That's too many in one bed. <laughs> you must do that. Oh, now, really, I... Oh, don't get so upset, Ben. Dick and I want you to be a big success tonight, and if you are, I'll take you on a wonderful trip around the world. Just think of it. All those wonderful countries you're going to see. Just think of it. We'll travel first class and stop at the most expensive hotels in every town. Women, wine, champagne. Just think of it. Oh, baby, do you really mean that? No, but just think of it. <laughs> now, look, I refuse to stand here and be insulted. You're right, Ben. We are going to drill you. Well, what do you know about drilling? <laughs> what do I know about drilling? I was a soldier in the Boer War. <laughs> and may I say, probably the smallest soldier in the Boer War. The smallest soldier? Yes, I must have been, because one night I went to sleep on my watch. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, Ben, yes. I'm going to drill you. Drill me? One, 
two, march. All right. One. About turn. I said, about turn. Yes. Where's Ben going, Bibi? Well, he's got such big feet that he had to go down the crossroads to turn around. Oh, I see. Hey, I heard that remark. Don't mind, Bibi. Don't mind, Bibi, Ben. No. Lift up your right leg. Like this? Yes. Now the left leg. Like this? Yes. Thank you. Well, why make me lift my leg? Well, I appeared with you here last Sunday. Ever since then, I've been missing a pair of brown shoes. <laughs> now, look, what is this? A physical examination. Now, Ben, have you any corns on your feet? No, I haven't. Have you suffered from corns anywhere else? Oh, don't be silly. Whoever gets corns anywhere else? Mounted policemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why? Well, if you two nitwits have finished, I think I'll be on my way. Oh, oh no, no, Ben. No, 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 no Ben. Uh, we couldn't let you go to an athletic party with such a suit. No. We will remodel it. <laughs> oh, but really... Shut up, baby. <laughs> Hand me the tape measure, please. Here you are. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, mark it down, will you yes, please? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Now, Ben, blow out your chest. <laughs> No, 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 no. Like this? No, no, no. Your chest. I'm measuring for your chest, not your trousers. <laughs> now, Ben, blow out once more. <laughs> Hurry up or I'll burst. Burst. 41 inches. <laughs> listen, listen. We can't send him to an athletic dinner with a 41-inch chest, can we? No, no. What are we going to do, Ben? Ah, we flatter him. You pay him a compliment, that'll make his chest enlarge. Oh, fun. Say, Ben, dear... I hear that you beat Tommy Farr with one hand tied behind you. Well, I, I don't like to brag. See, <laughs> baby, uh, uh, his chest is swelling already. Forty-three. <laughs> and I hear, you know, Ben, that you get more fan mail than anyone in England. Oh well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Forty-six. That's well, enough. That's enough, baby. <laughs> now, no, that's enough. Now we shall measure his waist. Um, all right. About. Uh, 45 inches. Mm. Waist, 28 inches. I said waist, 45. I know, but Ben hasn't his binder on tonight. Oh, I see. <laughs> now, look, I... Quiet, Ben. Now, measure his trousers, Ben. Okay. Right leg. Right leg, 28. Right leg, 28. Left leg, 16. Left leg, 16. <laughs> well, look. Why is the left leg shorter than the right? Because you live on the side of a hill. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, uh, will I wear braces with these trousers? No, no, you just hold them up with your teeth. <laughs> now, look, you've insulted me enough. Say, shut up, shut up, Ben. Bibi, hmm? I'm not happy with this right sleeve. No, I don't no, think it's... Tear it off. Say, look, look, you've torn the sleeve right out of my suit. Now, why did you do that? You know, Bibi, Ben's right. Mm. It does look odd. You better tear the other sleeve off. Okay. Ow! Oh. Oh. Uh, 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 you know, I don't like this left lapel very much. Oh, no. <laughs> you like it? Uh, no. I don't like the right one. Oh, no, wait. No, okay. it, don't that? you think the vest is a little bit tight around the knees? Uh, yes, I think you're right. Well, look. Listen, you two, I'm practically undressed. Well, then, put this scarf around your neck. Oh, yes. like oh, but this scarf is too long for me. It is not. You're too short for the scarf. <laughs> but there's rust on this material. Uh, that means it will wear like iron. <laughs> oh, but Vic, Vic, it smells. No, it doesn't. That's me. Vivi. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ben's jacket should have a slit in the back. What you're do you think? You're right, you're right. And I can't find it. Why, you? <laughs> we'll fix that now. Yes. Ben, yes. now you're beginning to look like something. Yes. I won't say what, but something. Yes. Now, for the trousers. Bibi, are trousers singular or plural? Well, let me see. They're singular at the top and they're plural at the bottom. Now, then, Billy, tell me, Ben, will you have two pair of trousers or just one with a sliding seat? <laughs> now, see here, you two. Quiet, quiet, I... quiet, quiet, Ben. You know, I think for a PTE's trousers are too long. <laughs> oh, but definitely. What are we waiting for? Oh, goody, goody. Hey, no, wait. Oh, look, this is awful. Oh, you ruined my suit. Oh, look. Oh, well, look, look here. Suit. Look what you've done to me. I have no sleeves, no lapels. You've cut my trousers off to the knees. Now what do I look like? I don't know, Ben, but oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> If you could only cook. <laughs> well, folks, it looks like I'm not going to the party tonight. However, I'll be back at those two before next week. So be sure and tune in because we'll be with you again then. 
So until then, this is... Stevie Daniels. Speak Oliver. Jay Wilbur. And Ben Lyon. That's me, folks. Wishing you the best of everything. So until next week, tickety-boo, everybody, and so long, gang. Stevie Daniels!